What's up, guys? Jordan McAbee here, FantasyRacingOnline.com, and we're on to Kansas with the Hollywood Casino 400. Race number two of the round of eight. It's uh, very similar to last week. So Texas, low wear, mile and a half track. Kansas, low wear, mile and a half track. We're going to be talking about and targeting a lot of the same drivers. The difference between last week and this week is DraftKings priced very well again this week, but priced... Larson up, priced Hamlin up, priced, priced Kyle Busch up. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to to build a lineup with the projected dominators. Um, but um, it's still, I, th- I still think it's pretty simple to land on a basic build this week. And, and we'll kind of go over that, you know, as we did last week with um, Texas and, and kind of it, this video being more about the actual build itself as opposed to specific drivers. Uh, starting the lineup, we're looking at Larson on the pole. Got Ryan Blaney second, Keselowski third, Kyle Busch fourth, Chase Elliott fifth, Hamlin sixth. A little further back, we got Byron starting ninth, Harvick 11th, Tyler Reddick 12th. Going even further back, um, you know, Chastain 24th, Alex Bowman 25th, Bubba Wallace 27th, Stenhouse 28th. You know, when we had the, all those wrecks at Texas, it really pushed back a lot of these guys um, as far as the starting lineup and and because of the um, formula being used and, and uh, you know, it just it, it makes for a lot of chalk plays. You know, Ryan Newman starting 31st, Ryan Priest starting 32nd. Then we got Parker Kligerman in the 96 Toyota this week for Gaunt Brothers. You know, he's going to start dead last. So um, as far as the algorithm goes, it's got Kyle Larson up top. No surprise there. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch right there as well. William Byron fourth, Blaney fifth. A lot of the same stuff as last week. Chase Elliott sixth. Kozlowski, Harvick, Logano, Truex rounding out the top ten. Scott Reddick in 11th, Bowman in 12th, Bell in 13th. Um, it's a lot of the same. It doesn't doesn't change a lot when we're at these low wear mile and a half tracks, especially back to back. So, um, you know, looking at specifically low wear tracks this year. So the low wear mile and a half tracks, we're looking at the two Vegas races. We're looking at Charlotte. We're looking at Texas and looking at the first Kansas race. Best average finish, Kyle Busch, 3.6. Keselowski, 5.4. Chase Elliott, 5.8. Kyle Larson, 6.4. I will note that Kyle Larson has won three of the five. Denny Hamlin, 7.0. William Byron, 8.2. Kevin Harvick, 9.2. And then Blaney at 10.0. When you go by average running position, Kyle Larson, 3.1. Just in a league of his own on this track type this year. Got Byron at 6.2. Kyle Busch at 6.6. Hamlin at 6.9. Nice. And then Chase Elliott, 7.8. Keselowski, 8.6. Blaney, 9.2. Reddick and Harvick at 9.8. So um, it's it's a lot of the same guys up top and you know, typically at the front um, at these low-wear mile-and-a-half racetracks. When it comes to fastest laps, Kyle Larson leading the way with 340. Next best, William Byron at 177. <laughs> Kyle Busch at 109, Chase Elliott at 96, and then Blaney and Reddick at 76. Um, looking at the 550 horsepower package this year, so this includes 11 races. This includes Homestead. It includes the two Vegas races. It includes the two Atlanta races. It includes Kansas. It includes Charlotte. It includes the two Pocono races. It includes Michigan. Um, and then it includes Texas last week as well. Um, so those 11 races, best average finish, Kyle Busch 4.1, Kyle Larson 6.4, Denny Hamlin 7.8, Byron 7.9. Blaney 8.8, Harvick 8.9, and Keselowski 9.4. Best average running position, Kyle Larson 4.4, William Byron 7.0, Kyle Busch 7.2, Denny Hamlin 7.6, Blaney 9.7, Truex 10.1. Fastest laps, Kyle Larson 510. Next best, William Byron at 268, Kyle Busch at 208, Keselowski at 134, Kurt Busch 131, Chase Elliott 127, Blaney 126, and Hamlin 119. Um, yeah, so like I said, a lot, very similar to last week. And as we talked about, as Rotodoc and I talked about on Stacking Dennings, the podcast this week, if you haven't listened to that, go ahead and give it a listen. Try not to overreact to what we saw at Texas. So what we saw at Texas was Joe Gibbs Racing wasn't as fast as expected and 
Penske Racing was a little bit faster than expected, especially Keselowski, especially Logano. They both showed pretty good speed. Harvick was up there all day. <clears throat> Try not to overreact to that this week. Um, Texas is a little bit different than Kansas. I fully expect Kansas to be a, a rebound track for Joe Gibbs Racing, for Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, um, maybe even Truex. Truex hasn't been great on this track type this year, but possibly you know rebound there. But definitely think Hamlin and Kyle Busch are going to challenge for the win. Um, and are going to put up some dominator points. So um, don't discount them just because they looked off last week at Texas. Um, but, you know, we'll start off this uh, driver breakdown here. Kyle Larson, he's on the pole, $11,700. You know, there's a lot of – there's narratives going around that he's not going to try this week. He's not going to try at Martinsville because he doesn't have to. That's just – I don't believe it. It's dumb. Um if you believe it, more power to you. And if if it, I just don't see it coming true. Here's here's what I see happening if Larson would somehow not completely dominate this race as he's done every single time we've come to a mile and a half low wear track. It's if he's setting himself up to win the race later. So if he's not pitting or if he's taking two tires or or just kind of experimenting or, or getting off sequence, that's where I can see Kyle Larson maybe not getting the dominator points that we expect of him, but at the same time, he starts on the pole, so he's at least going to lead the early part of this race. He's going to get there in dominator points, and he's going to challenge for the win. He has the best car on this track type this year. When you take a look at um, you know, the low-wear mile-and-a-halves, as I said, 340 fastest laps, 913 laps led. His lowest amount of fastest laps on this track type this year is – Pull up my right spreadsheet here. Um, Forty-three, and that was in the second Vegas race when when Hendrick had those um, stupid pit strategies. That's his lowest. That's his lowest amount of fastest laps. He had fifty-seven in the first Vegas race. He had sixty-nine at Charlotte. Nice. He had 67 at the, in the first Kansas race. He had 104 at Texas last week. Like, it's, this is, every single statistic is screaming that Kyle Larson is the best play this week. I think you need to have significant exposure to Kyle Larson this week. Um, there's no reason not to. He's not going to take a week off. He's going for a win. He wants double-digit wins. He wants as many wins as possible. It's Kyle Larson. Just don't overthink this because a lot of people are doing that. Denny Hamlin starts sixth. He's 11,000. I think he's, he's a solid tournament play. I think you can fit in a lineup with Hamlin and Larson. What you're really relying on with that, though, is Hamlin leading a good portion of this race or picking up a good portion of fastest laps, which he hasn't really done on this track type this year. He did put 32 up at Vegas, too, but he did lead a lot of that race. So, um, you know, Hamlin, he doesn't put up the fastest laps, really, unless he leads. So... Could he get up there and lead? Yes. He's won here three times at Kansas. He's not bad at this racetrack. Um, is he, you know, he's led 50 or more, 57 or more in three of the last four races here. He can get up there and lead. It's, can he get around Larson? Is he going to be better than Kyle Busch? Is he going to be better than Byron Blaney? You know, that's where you really have to break it down. But I don't think it's impossible to put a lineup together with Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin. And I think Denny Hamlin's a solid pivot as well if you don't want to go Larson for some reason. Uh, like I said, I still think Larson's the best play. Uh, I will pull up my um, projections here quick. So you can always find these on my website, fantasyracingonline.com. Totally free. You know, go check them out. Uh, Larson projected, I have projected for 80.37 points. That's on the very conservative side. As you can see, his ceiling over here is 131.2. I mean, he's, the 80 is, is conservative. I'll, I'll say that. Denny Hamlin, 65, Cowboy, 65. Um, and then we've got Byron, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, right there in the 55 to 57 range. You know, Harvick, Reddick, Bowman, Keselowski, right there in the low 40s. Um, Stenhouse, Austin Dillon, Christopher Bell, Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace, Truex, Busher, DiBenedetto, and Kurt Busch all in the mid-30s, mid to low 30s. When you go by a projected ceiling, Kyle Larson, number one, at 131.2. We got Kyle Busch at 90.05. Blaney, 89.5. Hamlin, 85.6. Chase Elliott, 84.5. And then Byron, 72. 
Um, and then the, and there's a pretty big gap down to Tyler Reddick there at 59.75, Keselowski 58. So, um, like I said, fantasyracingonline.com, if you want to see those projections, just click on the DraftKings article, and there they are. Um, Kyle Busch, starting fourth, he's 10,700. I think he's a great play this week. Just like Hamlin, I think you can pair him with Larson. Uh, I probably wouldn't go with him instead of Larson. I probably would do a, a lineup Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. But Kyle, Kyle Busch has finished third or better in four of the five low wear mile and a half tracks, track races this year. He's best average finish, 3.6. Uh, he can get some fastest laps. Uh, he did win the first Kansas race this year. As far as fastest laps go, he put up uh, 31 at Vegas, too. He put 36 at Charlotte, th- uh, 22 in the first Kansas race. Only 11 at Texas last week, but like I said, I think they're going to bounce back. So I definitely think Kyle Busch is a tournament play. I wrote him up as a tournament play in my article this week. So um, I think I think Kyle Busch is really solid. Martin Truex Jr., he starts 7th. He's 10,400. I'm just not seeing the upside here. I, I'm not seeing Martin Truex Jr., leading a ton of this race and winning it could he sneak in and win it yes do i think he's going to go out there and you know pull a denny hamlin and and come out of nowhere and and lead 100 laps and win it he's led eight laps on this track type this year and as far as fastest laps go he has 13 over five races the speed is just not there with martin Truex jr in this 19 toyota this year 10,400 in DraftKings. It's just not worth it with him starting seventh. So um, I don't even like him as a tournament play. I think he's about a 10th place car. I think on a good day, he's about a fifth place car, and it's not going to get it done in this price range. It's just, it's not going to get it done. So um, definitely, like, if I'm only building tw- even 20, 30 lineups, I'm probably not going to have any Truex at all, to be honest with you. Chase Elliott, he starts fifth. He's $10,000. You should always like Hendrick cars at mile and a half tracks. Um, Chase did struggle at Texas last week, but he's finished top five in three of the five low wear mile and a half tracks. And Kansas is his best low wear mile and a half track. Um, one here in 2018, top six in five of the last six races here. Um, six of the last eight, you know, he can get up there and lead laps. He's led 40 or more in three of the last six races here. And you kind of just have to think how this race is going to play out. You know, like I said, we talked about this on Stacking Denny's. The only, one of the very few possibilities I could see Kyle Larson not winning this race is if Chase Elliott starts alongside him on the final restart. Because, hey, team order still exists whether we want to believe it or not. Chase Elliott, if you if you can lock him into Phoenix, um, I think Kyle Larson will do that and then, you know, at ten thousand dollars, it's it's it makes Chase Elliott, I think, a very good play because he can get twenty to thirty fastest laps without winning the race. So if he gets up there and leads twenty to thirty of the final laps and wins it, I think he gets there. You know, if if, if you're looking at a build with him and Larson in it, Larson leads most of the race. Chase Elliott comes and wins it at the end, gets some fastest laps along the way, some laps led. I think he can get there at ten thousand and get in the optimal. So. Um, definitely like Chase Elliott. I almost wrote him up as a tournament play. Um, didn't, like I said, I went with Kyle Busch, but I, I'm going to have plenty of Chase Elliott exposure this week, starting fifth. I think he's a, I think he's a strong play this week. Alex Bowman, he starts 25th. He's $9,800. I've, I mentioned it every, almost every week. I don't like paying up for place differential. And if this kills me, this kills me. I'm just not seeing the huge amount of value there. And here's why. Alex Bowman, 28 fastest laps on low wear mile and a half tracks this year. He had six at Vegas too. He had 14 in the first Vegas race, seven at Charlotte, one at Kansas, zero at Texas. I can, I think Alex Bowman can run top 10. I think he can potentially finish, you know, maybe challenge for a top five. This is a Hendrick car. He's decent at this racetrack looking third, eighth, second, ninth, 11th over the last six races. I think he can get there. I just hate paying up for place differential. I'm going to have some Bowman exposure, but I'm not going to have a ton. I just don't see the dominator upside. And when you're paying 9,800, I think you're going to need that. When you have Byron at 9,500, Blaney at 9,300, both have dominator upside, dominator point upside this week. It's hard to justify paying that for Alex Bowman, who, by the way, 
Hasn't been finishing on lower mile and a half tracks this year. Bowman, average finish on this track type, 21.0. Average running position, 13.1. Obviously, he's ran into a lot of bad luck. But um, fifth at Charlotte, that's his only finish better than 18th on this track type this year. He's just ran into a lot of back, bad luck. Like I said, I think he can finish eighth. But in order for that to pay off, I think Byron's going to have to not dominate and Blaney is going to have to not dominate, and maybe even Elliott not dominate. So now you're relying on three guys that are likely to dominate to not dominate. You're what you're you're relying on too much to go right by pivoting to Alex Bowman. So I'm not going to have a ton of Alex Bowman. I'll, I'm sure I'll have some, but I just I don't like paying out for place differential, especially with a guy as volatile as Alex Bowman. Um, you know, him running eighth is a good day for him. So. That's just that's where I'm at on on that. I just don't see the dominator upside in when you're paying that much. I I just I'd rather be underweight on someone like Bowman. Byron wrote him up as a cash play. We saw last week what he can do. Finish second, challenge for the win. Um, here here on the low wear mile and a half tracks this year. Second most fastest laps. Second best average running position. He doesn't get the finishes sometimes, but Byron did finish eighth at Vegas. He finished fourth at Charlotte. He finished ninth in the first Kansas race. He finished second at Texas last week. He can get there. I, He's a shoe in, in in lineups this week, starting ninth because he's not a playoff driver anymore. He's just, he, he gets fastest laps at this track type and he can get a top five finish. So at $9,500, I think they have William Byron underpriced. When you look at fastest laps this year, he had 17 in the first Kansas race. That's his lowest on low wear mile and a half tracks this year. He had 57 at Texas last week. He had 51 at Charlotte. He had 31 at Vegas, third, or 21 at Vegas too. I think these cars that they're running right now, Byron, Larson, they've been built for a while, and they're the best. These are the best cars that Hendrick has. So I definitely think William Byron is a solid top five play this week. I think he's... Um, going to get fastest laps and barring him wrecking out or having some kind of mechanical issue. It's hard to imagine Byron not being in the optimal. Like I said, I think he's a cash play, um, him and Larson. That's where I'm starting my cash, cash lineups this week. Ryan Blaney starts second, $9,300. My projections really like Ryan Blaney this week. I will say that. Um, one thing about Kansas is he hasn't got a finish here in a while and it's, it's just weird because he runs really, really well at this racetrack. So zero top five since he was running in the Wood Brothers car back in 2017. But look at these stage finishes. Eighth, sixth, fourth, third, fourth, second, seventh, second, third, second, first, third, fourth, eighth, third, first. He runs really well at Kansas Speedway. When you combine that with the fact that Blaney gets fastest laps without leading, which I like, at this track type, Blaney, 76 fastest laps, only 11 laps led. Breaking it down by race, he had 22 at Texas last week, 16 at, in the first Kansas race, 10 at Charlotte, 16 at Vegas, 12 at Vegas 2. You can pretty much guarantee that Blaney's going to get you 10 to 20 fastest laps. Yeah, he starts second. Yes, it's a little risky. That's why he's a tournament play. I wrote him up as a tournament play. It's it goes against your your common sense part of your brain to run the guys starting first and second in this race. But if Kyle Larson gets off sequence or something weird happens um, and he doesn't just completely dominate this race from st start to finish, you have to think Ryan Blaney is going to get up there and he could become a second dominator. So I still like Ryan Blaney. I think he's underpriced. At $9,300, he doesn't have to do a lot to hit value. So a top five finish in 20 fastest laps and maybe 20 laps led is going to get you there with Ryan Blaney. So I definitely like Ryan Blaney. He's actually, he pops it as the optimal, uh, the optimal lineup, according to my projections this week. Um, Blaney's in it. Byron's in it. Larson is in it. So um, my projections really like Ryan Blaney, probably a little too much, to be honest with you. But um, I think he's a great play. I, I don't mind it at all. I don't even mind it going with, Kyle Larson. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at with when it comes to Ryan Blaney. Uh, Brad Keselowski starts third. He's $9,100. Like, he's one of those that uh, it wouldn't be surprising if he did really well. But starting third, it's going to be tough. 
So Kez has three top four finishes in the five lower mile and a half track races this year. He also has a seventh in the second Vegas race and 11th at Charlotte. I think he's going to be pretty solid here on Sunday at Kansas. It all comes down to what kind of dominator points does he put up? So when you take a look at Keselowski, he just doesn't, he doesn't put up fastest laps. He rarely puts up fastest laps. So you're needing him then to lead. Look at fastest laps. He had uh, six at Vegas two. He had 30 in the first Vegas race. And the reason that he had 30 fastest laps in the first Vegas race is because he led uh, 27 laps. He had 18 in the first Kansas race. He led 72 laps. Eight at Charlotte, six at Vegas two, 11 at Texas. I think like maximum Keselowski's at, um, you know, 10 to 15 fastest laps. And even then, like we're only looking at 267 laps this weekend. We're not looking at the 334 that we had last week at Texas. So um, I could see Keselowski as a pivot off of Blaney, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, if you don't want to trust Blaney, going down to Keselowski. But I think Blaney has higher upside than Keselowski does. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's an awful pick. I just, it's hard to imagine Kez getting into the optimal unless he surprise leads a lot of this race. And not even, not even a lot, but like 40 laps or something. It's just, it's, I don't see that happening, but I've been wrong before. Kevin Harvick starts 11th. He's $8,900. I think he's a he's safe play, which is weird to say considering Kevin Harvick's season, but lower mile and a half have been pretty solid for Kevin Harvick this year. He was fifth at Texas last week. He was second in the first Kansas race, um, benefited from a late caution and some late carnage uh 10th at charlotte 9th at vegas 2 20th in the first vegas race i think harvick's a solid you know top eight car he can get there i think it's a safe i i just don't know if he gets the fastest laps he did have 14 at texas last week he had 24 at charlotte so those numbers are encouraging but i don't i'm not sure an eighth place finish gets you, gets it to you there from from harvick uh but he is a little bit safer than taking, you know, Ryan Blaney or Keselowski. So I can't can't uh, fault you there. Like I said, Harvick should be a top top ten car. He's pretty good here at Kansas, but you got to remember this isn't this isn't twenty twenty Kevin Harvick. He finished second last year, uh, led eighty five laps. You know that that was a completely different Kevin Harvick. But um, yeah, I think I think my projections for this week are a little bit low on Harvick. To be honest with you, you know, forty three point five. I think you can get better than that, <clears throat> but that's a safe number to, to roll with. And like I said, I think he's about an eighth place car, a little bit of luck, a good, a good final restart. He could get into the top five, but, um, definitely I don't hate Kevin Harvick in a lineup this week. It's, uh, like I said, it's a safe play relatively safe, you know, starting 11th Joey Logano starts eighth. He's $8,700. Um, it's just like the other Penske guys. Logano doesn't get fast laps. And he's not going to lead. So he had two at Texas last week. He had four at Charlotte. He had one at Vegas. He had one at Vegas, too. He had zero in the first Kansas race. He was garbage in this first Kansas race. And honestly, he's been garbage in every low-wear mile-and-a-half track race this year. Uh, did look pretty good last week at Texas. He wrecked out. Uh, but average finish to 16.8 on the low-wear mile-and-a-halves this year. Average running position in 12.9. Eight fastest laps and seven laps led. That's just not going to do it. Um, I don't even. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm probably not going to land on Logano at all this week unless I put unless I put together a ton of lineups, which I don't plan on doing. So um, I just don't. I'm not seeing even at eighty seven hundred dollars. I'm not seeing the upside with Logano to get there. I I'd rather go elsewhere. Um, yeah. Kurt Busch starts thirteenth. He's eighty five hundred dollars. I will say he could be a decent pivot off of Reddick. I think a lot of people are going to go to Reddick, and they should. But, um, you know, Reddick has significantly higher upside than Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch doesn't get fast laps. He's not going to lead this race. Um, a good race out of him would be about an eighth-place finish. So it, it, it's kind of like Logano. Like, it's just – it's not there. I don't, I don't see the, I don't see the upside at $8,500 for Kurt Busch. So I know I'm not going to get to him with the lineups that I build. It's, it's just not going to happen. 
Tyler Reddick, he starts 12th. He's $8,400. <clears throat> we saw what he can do last week. He can run top five. He's needs to stop driving like an idiot. Um, but what I really like about Reddick, 76 fastest laps on low wear mile and a half this year. And when you can get that kind of consistency, he also has an average finish of 10.6. So uh, Reddick finished sixth at Vegas two. He finished ninth at Charlotte. Seventh at Kansas, ninth at Texas. He's a, he's going to be a top ten car this week. But looking further into fastest laps, twenty at Texas, eighteen at Charlotte, twelve in the first Kansas race, twenty at Vegas two, six in the first Vegas race. I think Reddick's going to get there with double digit fastest laps. He's going to be able to challenge for a top five. Definitely be top ten unless something weird happens. I think Reddick's a great play. I wrote him up as a tournament play, but he might he might end up being a lot higher owned than than I think, but I think Reddick's a great play this week. Uh, nothing to dislike about him. He finished uh, seventh last year, was it? Seventh earlier this year, 13th last year, ninth in his rookie year. Like He, he can get there. Uh, he's just got to stop driving like an idiot, and he can get there. Ross Chastain, I made my case against Ross Chastain last week. 24th is where he starts this week, $8,200. It's a little bit easier to fit in Ross Chastain this week. Again, I'm probably going Reddick in this in this price range, but this is kind of where the price range where it's a little easier to play place differential as a pivot as opposed to you know up here with Bowman at $9,800. So Chastain finished uh, 12th here at Kansas, no 14th here at Kansas in the first race. Does he get there with 10 place differential points and a 14th place finish? No. I I still don't like Ross Chastain this week, but I don't dislike him as much as I did last week. I could still see myself having one or two Ross Chastain lineups is what I'm getting at here. Um, still, though, take that with a grain of salt for what I'm saying. Like Chastain has been awful at the low wear mile and a half. He's been awful in this package. 11 races, average finish of 24.6, average running position 22.9, 19 fastest laps in 11 races. Corey LaJoy has more fastest laps. Justin Haley has almost half. So, um, yeah, I like I said, this price range, if, if you're trying to pivot, you, I could see the case made for Ross Chastain starting 24th, but honestly, I'm probably going to want to go to Bell starting 10th, $8,000. If I'm pivoting off of Redick or if I'm trying to combine someone with Redick, it's going to be Christopher Bell. He's so hit or miss just overall, but... We saw what he could do last week. He got up there. He finished third. He finished seventh at Vegas earlier this year. He hasn't been awful. He uh, average running position here at Kansas of 10.9 in the first race. Um, I forget what happened late, but he didn't get the finish. Um, but Bell can get there. I. It's just you're relying on a lot of stuff happening, and that's not the best case scenario, but it's a little bit easier when – the driver is only eight thousand um, dollars. Like I said, I I don't hate Bell this week. I almost wrote him up as a tournament play, decided against it, but I definitely think he's a he's a alternative option and maybe a pivot or even a combine with Reddick if he can get up there. This is still a Gibbs car, and like I said, I think Gibbs is going to um, rebound this week and have really good runs. So I can see Bell getting there. Um, track record finished. 10th with Levine last year. Like I can, I, I can see Christopher Bell running top 10 and if he can sneak in the top five, I think he can get there um, as a, as a very solid differential play. Austin Dillon starts 14th. He's $7,800. Um, yeah. He kind of just dudded at Texas last week. Like he wasn't awful, but worst low wear mile and a half finish of the year starting 14th. Um, his finishes 10th at Kansas, 6th at Charlotte, 12th at Vegas, 13th at Vegas two, 14th at Texas. It's not that I don't think Austin Dillon can get there. I'm just not landing there on many of my builds. Like I'm not hitting this range like I was last week. So, um, that's kind of why I'm off Austin Dillon this week. Um, you know, if you, if you're putting in a ton of lineups, yes, I think you need exposure because he can still run top 10, but, um, you know, if, if you're like me and you're only putting in 20 something lineups, I think you're, you're, 
you're going off of a a a certain type of build, which we'll go over in a little bit. Uh, you can see his track record here at Kansas. Um, you know, he should he's had top tens here before. He can easily do it again. But um, I think you're going a certain type of build, and I don't think you're hitting Austin Dillon or needing to hit Austin Dillon. Eric Amarillo starts 20th. He's $7,600. That's about where he'll finish. He finished 18th at Texas last week. That's his best finish on the low wear mile and a half this year. He's not going to get laps led. He's not going to get dominator points. He's not worth $7,600. Bubba Wallace starts 27th. He's $7,400. This is where it gets interesting because I don't think a lot of people are going to land on Bubba just because of his price. He's in a Gibbs car, basically. And you look at the low wear mile and a half this year. Bubba Wallace, average running position 20.3, average finish at 23.2. But 16th at Vegas 2, 14th at Charlotte. He can run top 15. Um, you know, starting 27th, if he can get up there and finish 12th, that's a pretty decent day out of someone like Bubba Wallace. And like I said, I think I don't think people are going to land on him. So I, I don't hate Bubba Wallace this week at all. I think he's a tournament option. It just depends whether you can fit him into your um into your lineup with his salary he did finish 18th here in this race one year ago with petty so um i think the upside's there with bubba it's just whether you can afford it it's it's gonna be tough i'll say that uh ryan newman starts 31st he's 7300 i don't see a point of, i like if you're in that price range just go with bubba because newman's about newman on a good day is about 20th um and i think just because he starts 31st he's going to get higher ownership than Bubba, whereas Bubba has a higher ceiling. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing the speed out of Newman, although he did finish 16th here at Kansas in the first race. It's not the same Newman that we have right now. So I think I think a very good day out of Ryan Newman would be 20th. I don't think he gets there at $7,300, to be honest with you. Parker Kligerman starts 40th. He's $7,100. He's in the 96 car, which is the biggest problem this week. Um, let me see if I can pull up stats with that car i'm pretty sure that that car hasn't ran um did harrison burton run this car i don't think this car has ran there we go i don't think this car has ran um an intermediate track this year so yeah 20th mid 20s but go back to 2020 when Suarez was in it, 27th at Texas, 27th at Kansas, 29th at Vegas. Kligerman's not Suarez. Like, I just don't – they priced Kligerman too high, to be honest with you. I mean, it, the price makes sense. He starts 40th. The thing is, we're probably not going to get that carnage that we saw last week. So, yes, it's a very safe option. Am I going to land on Kligerman this week? No, because I think his ceiling's about a 27th place finish. I don't think he gets there. I'd rather go with Stenhouse or DiBenedetto, even Newman or Bubba or Briscoe or Swar Like I'm picking all these other guys over Kligerman. So very safe option, but I I don't think I don't even think he's a cash play this week. To be honest with you, uh, I'd rather go Stenhouse in cash. To be like, to be completely clear, like I think Stenhouse has a lot higher upside. Um, even though game theory might say Kligerman might be the better play there, I think Stenhouse is, is better. Stenhouse starts 28th. He's $7,000. Wrecked at, in the first Kansas race, wrecked at Texas. But when he doesn't wreck, 17th at Vegas 2, 11th at Vegas, 12th at Charlotte. It's going to be a top 15 car. Looking at track record when it comes to Stenhouse, you know, 16th, 16th, 11th, 20th, 11th, 11th, 19th, 13th, 13th. Yes, he disappointed like hell last week at Texas. Could he do it again? Yes, it's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. But am I willing to, once again, go very heavy on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. like I did last week? Uh, this week, yes, absolutely. He's a great play at $7,000. He's underpriced for what he can do. Matt Benedetto starts 15th. He's $6,800. Guys, if we're playing him, like, what was his ownership last week? Let me pull this up real quick because I know it was high. It was, like... Not even decently high, but like surprisingly high. So De Benedetto at Texas. Where are we at? Okay. Started thirteenth, 
$7,400. He was 16% owned. Starting 15th, $6,800. Like, why wouldn't... He's going to have similar ownership. I still think it's a really good play. Um, and to get off the Stenhouse chalk, to get off the Newman chalk, to get off the Kligerman chalk, De Benedetto is a very good tournament option. Starting 15th, we've seen what he can do at this track type. Um, 12th at Vegas, 2. 16th at Vegas, 4th at Kansas, his first race. 13th at Texas last week. He can get a top 10. So getting a top 10 from a sub $7,000 driver on DraftKings is always going to be a good day. Um, I think I think DeBenedetto is a great play. Briscoe was also surprisingly fast at Texas last week. I know I said don't overreact, but that team is has decent speed this week. Or not this week, but like the last two months. So 15th, 14th, 13th, 16th. That's not awful for Chase Briscoe. Starting 19th, $6,600. I don't mind having Briscoe exposure either. Like I, I, I like the drivers in this price range of six thousand dollars. I think they all have good upside. Um, is the reaction to Briscoe and thinking he has upside based or swayed by Texas results last week? Maybe a smidge, but that team is just turning things around. I like how they're running. Um, and I think Briscoe can maybe, you know, challenge for a top 12 finish, which in this price range, um, it's, it makes him a good option, a, a, a decent option, not like a absolutely smash option. But I, but if, if you don't have enough money to get Stenhouse, if you don't have enough money to get DiBenedetto and Briscoe fits into your lineup, he's a decent option. He's well worth it. Daniel Suarez starts 16th. He's $6,400. You know, we saw him finish 10th at, at Texas last week. He was 11th at Kansas the first race, 15th at Charlotte, 15th at Vegas too. The thing with Suarez is he gets there not by speed, but by kind of by luck. And yes, it works out a lot of the times. And yes, you should have some exposure to him. But um, starting 16th, it just makes it a little, a lot more difficult for him to get there. So I don't hate it. I don't love it though. Um Let's go to track record. It's probably going to be pretty bad. Uh, 18th was Gaunt Brothers last year. 14th was Stuart Haas in 2019. 7th with Gibbs in 2017. Like I don't, I don't hate Suarez. It's just the, like to me, De Benedetto, Briscoe, Suarez are basically like a, just get a three sided something and flip it and pick if if you're debating between those three. Uh, again, it's gonna if it comes down to you have sixty four hundred dollars left with your lineup, you can plug in Suarez. It's not a bad option. Um, obviously, late, less place differential than Briscoe. A uh, little bit better place differential than De Benedetto, but less upside than De Benedetto. But Suarez isn't an awful play, I don't think this week. There's like there's not a lot of awful plays. There's a lot of ways you can go this week. Um, but as far as like projections and stuff, Stenhouse is the best in this range, according to my projections. Then we have Chris Busher starting 21st, $6,300, really underpriced by DraftKings. Not sure what they're thinking there. Wrote him up as a cash play. I'm going to be heavy on him. <clears throat> 14th at Vegas, 8th at Charlotte, 8th in the first Kansas race. 21st at Texas last week when he wrecked out. Like Chris Busher is a solid mile-and-a-half car this year. He had a 15th place average running position at Texas last week. So uh, $6,300 with, with top, with, with low teens upside and maybe even sneaking in a top 10. Yeah. Give me all of that. Give me all the busher. So uh, Michael McDowell starts 18th. He's $6,200. You know, he can work out if busher wrecks and if Suarez wrecks and if Briscoe wrecks and if Jones wrecks or, you know, some weird situation like that. But um you know, McDowell finishing 13th here at Kansas in the first race was kind of more of a fluke and kind of different to how they're, I mean, he started third, so that helped them. Um, you know, you look at the driver rating, it's nothing, it's just like Suarez. It's kind of just being in the right place at the right time. Same with Ryan Newman. So I can, I can easily make a case for potentially, um, going McDowell this week. He runs better in this package, but starting 18th, it's just probably not worth it. Eric Jones, I don't know what the hell to think about this guy. Starts 17th, he's $6,100. Mm, 
like if I say not to pick him, he's going to run great. If I say to pick him, he's going to look like garbage. That's kind of where we're at with Eric Jones. This team just comes out of nowhere um, this season when it, uh, as far as performance, you know. 12th at Texas last week. Ran 10th in the first Vegas race. And then 26th in the second Vegas race. And 25th at Kansas. And 16th at Charlotte. I... I don't particularly hate Eric Jones, but it's it's nobody I want to go crazy on this week. Um, I just he did run really well here with Gibbs, so you have to give him that. But you know, the twenty fifth here in the first race has to concern you. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to stay out of the out of the five thousand dollar range, which I'm totally on board with doing this week. Uh, and you can fit in like a Jones and Busher into your lineup. Go for it. Like that's, I, I'd gladly take that risk in tournaments because Priest. We'll, we'll get to these guys, but Priest isn't good on this track type. Alfredo's not great. Lejoy's not great. So, yeah. Cole Custer starts twenty second. He is six thousand dollars. Cole Custer's best finish on a low wear mile and a half track this year was Texas last week in nineteenth. And half the field wrecked. So Cole Custer's not good. He's not going to be good. He'll be lucky to finish where he starts. So I don't want any Custer this week, to be honest with you. Justin Haley starts 30-30. He's $5,800. A little bit better um, price from DraftKings this week for Justin Haley. But still, he's not good. A good day out of him is 28th. So no. Ryan Priest starts 32nd. He's $5,700. He's going to be chalk. Um, but he's just been so bad at mile and a half. You even go back to last year and Priest wasn't good at mile and a half. So let's pull up Ryan Priest real quick. First, let's take a look at, um, here at Kansas specifically. Like it, it's the thing with Ryan Priest is you can always make the case. Like he has a decent car. He can get there, but he's just, when you take a look at how he's actually finished at these mile and a half tracks, it's it's surprisingly bad. 36th at Texas, 28th at Vegas. Um 25th at Atlanta, which high wear, but still. 26th at Charlotte. 32nd at Kansas. 25th of eight, uh, at Atlanta. 15th at at Vegas, so there's a good one. Also started 19th in that race. Um Oh shit. I um See, he does have a 12th place here, but everything else is absolute garbage. And I know you can't expect a ton out of Ryan Priest starting 32nd. <clears throat> excuse me. Starting 32nd and being $5,700 on DraftKings. You're not expecting the world, but to make it work, like I said, I think you can fit in Eric Jones instead of Ryan Priest this week. And I think you have to do that, especially with if Priest is going to be as chalky as I think he is. I like being underweight on Priest even though it, he fits into a lot of lineups very easily. Um, I like being underweight on Ryan Priest. Uh, let's take a look at 2020 for him on low-wear mile-and-a-half tracks. 18th at Texas, that's the exception. 29th at Kansas. 19th at, damn it, you're proving me wrong. 19th at Vegas. Uh, 34th at Kansas. I feel like I missed one here. 38th at Kentucky. 24th at Charlotte. 22nd at Charlotte. 37th at Vegas. Like, he just runs into issues so much. Is it is that more bad luck than anything? Maybe, you know, maybe I'm talking myself more into Priest here. My, my projections really like Priest this week. I'll give you that. Um, I still don't mind being underweight on him. Maybe now not as much, but... Um, I still, I, he's going to be chalked down here starting 32nd and then pricing him $5,700. So maybe like in a single entry, I, I can see getting off a of priest or, you know, putting in a ton of lineups, shifting more toward the Eric Joneses as opposed to priest. But, um, you know, this, a safe option, I guess, is Ryan priest and just, just hope he doesn't throw it in the wall or something. That's, that's all you can ask for. Anthony Alfredo starts 29th. He's $5,600. Um, he's going to be about a mid-20s car. So, 
less upside than a lot in this range, but relatively safe. So he was 27th at Vegas, too. He was 24th at Vegas, 25th at Charlotte, 23rd at Kansas. I think he wrecked at Texas. He was 29th. So um, I just don't see Alfredo getting in the optimal this week. But he's going to get ownership just because of his price. So, yeah, Corey LaJoy starts 23rd. $5,500. $5,500. He finished 20th at Texas last week. That is his best. Uh, uh, sorry, he finished 19th at Charlotte as well. But other than that, he's been like, even in this package, he hasn't been good in in this package at Lower Mountain House. Average finish 27.9. Average running position 25.8. Uh, he's starting 20, 23rd. I don't see the point in taking a risk with LaJoy. I just don't see him getting another top 20 or even even contending for it without major, major incidents with drivers ahead of him. So just not seeing the value in LaJoy this week. Uh, as far as punting, you know, I don't – It's last week made the case for punting. It ended up working out, surprisingly, uh, with all those wrecks. It worked out a lot better than I expected. You know, BJ McLeod finishing 23rd was great. Um don't see that happening this week. Just based on how the drivers are priced, just don't see it happening. I don't think you need to go down into punt level. Um, I think you can build a really good lineup without doing that. So, um, so yeah. Optimal lineup, according to my projections this week, is Kyle Larson, William Byron, Ryan Blaney, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Chris Busher, and Ryan Priest. Leaves five hundred dollars on the table. Like I said, I don't mind going off a of priest and going to Jones. I don't mind if you want to stay on priest, going off a of Stenhouse and going to Bubba, or going to De Benedetto, something like that. Uh, if you go to De Benedetto, that leaves you seven thousand dollars, and you know what you can do then? Take off Blaney, and go to Chase Elliott, Larson, Byron, Elliott. You're getting the three hundred guys. You're not having the risk with. Ryan Blaney starting second. You get Chase Elliott starting fifth. Similar dominator upside. Similar finish upside. Uh, you are going to Benedetto instead of Stenhouse, but um, De Benedetto has upside as well. Like He can finish top 10. So I actually like this lineup right here, the Larson, Byron, Elliott, De Benedetto, Busher, Priest, a little bit more than my optimal of Larson, Byron, Blaney, Stenhouse, Busher, Priest. Um, Stenhouse, Busher, Priest. But um, I think both are pretty solid, and I think this is kind of where you want to build this week, um, or kind of like the uh, how you want to build, I guess, is is how I want to put it. Now, where it comes that that t- that type of line of construction. Now, where it becomes interesting is with Tyler Reddick. Um, you know, how do you fit in an eighty four hundred dollar driver? So the first line, the top lineup with Reddick in it, according to my projections goes uh, Larson, Kyle Busch, Tyler Reddick, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Busher Priest. Um, if you didn't want to go Kyle Busch and you still wanted to go William Byron, at least you have $1,400 to play with, um, which, you know, if you come up here and, like I said, you go with someone like Christopher Bell. You can then do something like this. Larson, Byron, Reddick, Bell, Busher, Jones. This lineup is really, this is a one dominator lineup build right here. And then you're just hoping to get lucky with Bell. You're hoping Reddick has a typical day and you're hoping Byron has a typical day. And they both challenge for top fives. They get fastest laps and they definitely finish top 10. Busher should be solid. And then Jones, you're, you're just, you're hoping for the flash in the pan, I guess. Um, but um, don't hate that build at all. But if you go Alfredo, I see that still doesn't. I mean, you can get up to instead of Bell going up to Kurt Busch, but I don't. I don't particularly love that. Um, what if you take Priest? Let's do a punt. Like, let's actually do a punt. See if it actually works out. And I'm just overlooking this a lot. So let's say you go half. Get you up to 95. 
depending on if you if you see value in uh, in Blaney. Hell, maybe it's going to end up being punt week again. <laughs> um, I I really don't hate that lineup at all. Larson, Byron, Blaney, Reddick, Busher, Huff. And you can go up to Balicki. I wouldn't go Balicki. <clears throat> I actually don't hate that. I actually don't hate that. Um, yeah. I'm sure I'll end up now with one or two punt lineups. What if you... Yeah, I don't hate that at all, to be honest with you. Larson, Byron, Blaney, Reddick, Busher, Half. I still like my um, my initial, my earlier builds that I was showing you guys, like my optimal and, and the second one. Uh, when you run, like if you take my projections and run through an optimizer and you throw 300 and you make it build 300 lineups, it get it actually spits out Half at 10%. Let's take a look at the, the top lineup with Quinn Half in it. I'm just curious. Uh it actually goes. See, I my I don't think my like. You'd have to force force in Reddick, I think, but it goes. Um, Larson, Kyle Bush, Byron, Stenhouse, Bush, or Howell. See, I'd ra I'd rather go with. I'd rather have Reddick in there. Um. Than something like that. I don't hate this lineup, but. Um, what's the next one? Next one goes Hamlin and Blaney instead of Byron and Kyle Busch. And then there we go. 36th highest lineup is um, Larson, Byron, Blaney. And this is just going on my projections, not like altering them with um, upside or anything. Uh Larson, Blaney, Byron, Reddick, Busher, Half. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't love the punt strategy this week as much as I did last week at Texas. But I think it's on the table now that I've actually looked at it. And Quinn Half is is thirty fifth, uh, or starting thirty fifth and so low priced. I can't. You like you're not gonna punt with McLeod this week. You're not gonna go Ryan Ellis. Uh, I don't like Balicki and Cody Ware. It's it's gonna be tough. I think to get him into a line. Um, depending on where you go, like if you go, if you don't want to go Blaney and you go Harvick, you know, that gives you more, more room to work with, but you're not going to go Fincham. You know, you could go Cody Ware then as a punt. Um, but yeah, you know, if you go, if you go Larson, Byron, Reddick, it, it opens the door to punt, I think. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Make sure you tune in to Brandon and I's live stream on race day. Um, not sure, probably the same time as always, I'm guessing. I don't know. It depends what the weather does this week. Like I said, I think I mentioned this, but it could end up being a night race. I don't think I mentioned it. Could end up being a night race at Kansas this week. Um, rain, scattered rains in the forecast. So never know what's going to happen there. And I'm recording this on Thursday, so a lot of shit can change between then. But um Keep an eye on the weather. You know, if this turns into a night race, I think it benefits Joe Gibbs racing a little bit. Uh, but Kyle Larson is the number one by far to most likely win, most likely dominate this race. So, um, yeah, that's all I got this week. Good luck at Kansas and talk to you next week with Martinsville and the final race before the championship. And this season has absolutely flown by. But uh, it's been a fun one. So um, good luck this weekend, and I'll see you later.